Hey, hey. Good afternoon. Barely afternoon. All right. I've got to run out and run a couple of errands. Buddy, you okay? That's what you get for eating dirt as you dig, because I can see it on your nose. Yeah. He's so... Ah! No. No, sir. You all right, Coop Coop? You okay, buddy? Yeah. All right. There's Sophie. We gotta work on her whelping box and room later today, don't we? Hey, gotta get my box ready. I'm getting close. Be here before you know it. So, grab my stuff. My gun skin's basically almost nearly identical uh, our uh, countertops. I would like to tell you how that turned out that way, but it was completely unrelated, but interesting, nonetheless. All right. A little windy and cool out here, especially when the other day it was like 60 or 70 degrees. All right. I could have took one of the other cars, but haven't drove the shit box in a while. So, let's drive in. Just about got the garage door fixed. Still, still has its moments, but it's close. It works much, much better. Can't see out of the fine glass real well, so let's make sure I don't run over here. All right, see you in a minute. It is noisy without a bad glass, I can tell you that. So my wife, thankfully, does like nearly all the shopping. I rarely go to the store, thankfully for her, because uh, I don't have the patience. And she's good. Dang, she's fast. But anyway, so of the stores I go to, this one right here is the most important by far. And hopefully I don't get hit turning into it. There we go. That's right, boys and girls. The liquor store. It's critical. That's how I put up with a bunch of you. Especially if you're a bad driver. So, uh, as I was walking, in, walking into my favorite store, these two guys sitting out there in the parking lot what they were doing they're right in front so probably nothing shady i don't think uh, anyway uh they they hollered at me they had to ask about the jeep they loved the side of it where it said my, my mom or uh, my mom my son was inmate of the month at paulding county jail they had a big laugh out of that one they had several questions but it was pretty funny uh they got a good hard laugh out of it i should have asked them i could have recorded it but they definitely uh they definitely got a kick out of it. And that's the fun thing about, the, you know, a gambler vehicle. I could have drove the supercharged Mustang and it gets a lot of looks and comments and stuff. You know, everybody's always nice. But, you know, everybody gets a big laugh out of this. Obviously, if I'm driving around this big old turd, I don't take things too serious. You know, there's a time to be serious, but there's a time not to be. And as I've gotten older, you know, I've learned to relax a little bit, quit being so damn intense and focused on things, and laugh a little bit. That's the beauty of this rolling shit box, as the gambler nation calls them. And uh, I love it. I mean, I mean, I talk to people from all different walks of life. They all love it. They got questions. Of course, I take opportunity to tell them about the gambler and stuff like that. I try to give them as much time as you know they want or that I have time for sometimes I have to cut it short unfortunately but for the most part it's always great um, sometimes I get people just look disgusted and that's even funnier than any any other comment or whatever someone might say because if you look disgusted you're the type of person I just uh, you can't have a little laugh or even laugh at yourself you know I don't know how you enjoy life to the full know when I was taking myself a very serious way too much I didn't enjoy life to the fullest shame on me for being a chucklehead so luckily I got 
got smarter as I've gotten older. It's been nice to be able to, some of the smartness much younger in life. Would have been a much less painful early uh, start. That's for sure. Oh. Look, there we go. That almost looks too good to be a gambler. Big panel wagon. Gotta run by AutoZone real quick and get some zip ties so I can finish Sophie's bubble box. So let me run in there and I'll see you back at the house. So while I was out running errands and meeting people at the liquor store, um, I forgot to get a few Sunday papers for Sophie's weapon box. So I'm off again, but I got old Cooper with me. Don't it, buddy? Huh? He may not look like it, but he loves to go for a ride. So he's excited to go for a, a short trip here to the local store. Get some newspapers. Aren't you, buddy? Yeah. It's, sadly, with his health, that's the one time we really see him get really excited. He was playing a little bit outside this morning, though. I think the medication and the stuff's helping him. He's on uh, some antibiotics. And, uh, they said we could start him back on his uh, Federal, and I'm probably pronouncing that right. wrong, but some medicine they give him for Cushing's disease. But it's helped him in the past. And then I've given him CBD oil. Uh, I'm used to, I give it to him in his food, but once he quit eating his food as consistently as I like, I mean, he kind of went through about a month period where he was grazing. So when he was grazing, I didn't feel like he was getting the CBD oil, which in my experience personally and with him, it helps with inflammation, keeps it down. So it's critical to get him the CBD oil. So I'm just giving it to him straight now. Hopefully, uh, and it seems like things are getting a little better, but he is waking us up at night um, to uh, take him out. And used to, he could sleep through the night without a bathroom. So, yeah, he, he's been doing better. I mean, the CBD oil helped with the inflammation, and he got way nicer with Knox. So when Knox was a pup, Cooper just could not stand him getting near him touching him and he wouldn't hurt him but he'd take his snout and flip him over or knock him aside so we had to we had to figure out what was going on there he was never an unaggressive dog so we knew something was going on we found out his pancreas was inflamed so we started on the cbd oil and that made a very big difference and he got really got much better in his behavior um, and the better all cut down on i mean you know pee breaks he's got to have which I don't do the you need to go pee you need to go potty command I ask my dogs hey you need to take five they they all have their unique Knox rings the bells because we bell trained him uh, Sophie just comes and stares at you but Sophie will hold it for, yesterday she held it for like 24 hours she, if it's raining or super cold she won't go out but she'll hold it she doesn't have accidents it's the damnedest thing I ever seen well, I should say, I had a boxer previously that would hold it about 14. So, and uh, her name was Bailey. Bailey would hold it for a long time. But Sophie's on the next level, especially being pregnant. And then Cooper, he comes over and snorts at you. He gives a huff. It's a small huff, a medium huff, a big huff. And if you don't move by the big huff, he bars. So you're getting up one way or another. Uh, but he was sleeping through the night. He's not now. So that's... It's a bit concerning, but uh, he seems to be a little more active now that he's on some uh, antibiotics. So hopefully the big guy's doing that. Can't see him, so I hope I got him on camera. But I do try to take him for a ride every time I can. I try to spoil him. He's the king of the house. Senior member. So all right, Cooper and I will see you back at the house. So I'm back home. Uh, I've got some newspapers. Uh, we have plastic on the carpet, and then we have it along the wall. Boxers, probably like most dogs, they shake and snot and blow stuff out. So 
we just thought it'd be easier on the walls if we kept it down. Uh, we taped them up, uh, covered most of it. We're probably still gonna have to repaint the room after the pups are born, but we did put the plastic down, cover the carpet. We've used this before for parties and stuff. It works really well. We get it off Amazon. I'd have to look back, it's relatively cheap. Um, and then I went and got some newspapers because once I get her whelping box done, right, we're using a little fold up plastic pool, very simple. And then what we're going to be doing is taking these noodles and putting them up about three inches high in the, it's probably hard to see, especially the way I'm holding the angle, but what we're trying to obtain is make sure that if a puppy gets up against the pool, that mama can't get over there and get between it and the pool and suffocate it unintentionally. It happens. It's not common as I understand it, but our dear sweet friend Priscilla, she's kind of helping us saying, hey, here's some things you can do to be proactive, cautious. So we have blankets. We actually have some more somewhere else. We've got a heater. The heaters to keep the puppies warm. We're going to, have to keep the room about 85 degrees and make sure they're warm and healthy. And then we plan on putting like newspaper, pee pads, blanket, or actually, that's probably wrong. I'll have to go back and look. Um, but we're going to put some sort of form there. Most likely it'll be, I'm assuming it'll be newspaper up top pee pads under it and a blanket and then we can just fold the blanket and the pee pads and the um, newspaper up as one throw them away and we have a fresh clean layer below I believe that's the right way uh, so if not I'll correct it in the next video but that's the plan so today I'm going to go and begin to mount the noodles about three inches above uh, that way a puppy can get in there and Sophie won't get up on there and accidentally uh, suffocate her, which is scary to think about. Um, dogs don't want to do that. We don't want that to happen, so we appreciate Priscilla's help. She's been a huge help. She's the one we got both Knox and Sophie from. Um, they are different, but uh, different bloodlines. Um, so, you know, we're still nervous. We got an x-ray coming up on Wednesday and that'll give us an idea of how many we're supposed to have. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we had one a little over a week ago and there was two showing, but poor old Sophie, she's big. There's probably four, maybe six in there at least. I want it to be manageable. I don't care if they're ugly as sin. I just want them to be healthy and I want her to get through it. You know, healthy, that's all I care about. So, and, and my wife Tracy, she's the same way. That's all she wants, so. Well, let me bang this out real quick and I'll show you the finished product. Alright, so if you can hear Knox, he's probably missing one of the, the uh, oldest cat, Templeton. He'll bark at her, but he won't get too close because she wears his butt out. Easily. Mm, she'll kind of paw at him, but ragdoll cats are not aggressive. They don't have a prey drive. That's say in the house and super protected, so uh, she's not going to do anything. So my assumption is, if he's barking like that, it's it's tempting. Him. So finished up the pool. I need to finish cutting the ties off here, but for now, that one right there may need to be changed and go up a little higher. I may have that one too low. The rest of it looks pretty good. I'm going to send some pictures to Priscilla. I'm gonna say it looks pretty good, right? Once I put the blankets and start to stretch everything out good, you've got space right there for the puppy to get and mama can't get up and press up against it. That's the goal. So, she said, hey, it needs to be, actually I had a couple of people tell me it needs to be three inches off the ground. It's close, with the exception of that one. So I think we're there, but I'm going to get some more feedback and see what they say. And I guess that does it for today's vlog because I didn't get much more done.